when you joined as chairman, I think in 2012, very early on, never in your wildest dreams, right? Would you imagine the success and sustained success of this company? Why does it? Why did it succeed? How would you categorize its success? Well, there's a few things when you look into it. And in hindsight, we are all a little bit smarter, obviously. But I think a key reason why CrowdStrike is very successful and will remain very successful is it's the orientation on long-term goals versus the temptation to fulfill short-term goals. One of the things that's always struck me about the CrowdStrike experience is that your CEO has been there from the start. And to be a CEO that's gone through startup to scale up to IPO and now command, uh, as you say, a $50 billion market cap organization, George must have understood the balance of learning and winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what are his attributes that make him and you, to an extent, so unique to have had this partnership for so long? Mm -hmm. So he has a very unique background of being a corporate entrepreneur in consulting business. And he simply is a very smart guy as well. But I think uh, there are a couple of elements that are unique with him that I don't see in many other CEOs. The first one is he can adopt very quickly. When you build a company from literally zero from scratch, you know, and you turn into a $50 billion powerhouse, yeah. Uh, you need to adopt to big numbers. Yeah, You have 10 people first, now we have 3,500 people. And you need to constantly adopt yourself, adapt yourself to those circumstances. So things are not constant. The second one, which I miss with most CEOs that build companies, is the attention to details. Because at some point, uh, CEOs forget to pay attention to details. When you look at your experience, what are the two or three things that you hold valuable as a leader? There's basically two things that I personally value uh, with uh, management. And if you're on the board, you need to pay attention to that. The first one, and I'm, I'm sure you still remember, is what I call the say-do ratio. Say-do ratio is something what you say, will you actually do it? So in an ideal case, it's a one-to-one. -one. You say something and you do it. In management, that's rarely to never the case, but it should be as close to number one as possible. If a manager has a one to a half ratio, which means he says one thing, but he does half of it, yeah, that's when I become a little bit more irritated <clears throat> because it's less predictable. So I try to instill the confidence with management that they rather say less, but they do it then. So for me, the number one importance is the say-do ratio needs to be as close to one-to-one -one as it can be. And that's not only for good things, it's also for bad things. Tell us what you can do. The second one is trust and verify until you trust. You have to have a certain default trust in management. Otherwise, it doesn't work. But initially, until you have a working relationship with management, make sure you verify whether your trust is justified until you feel confident enough that it's justified and then it's trust. So trust and verify until you trust.